1853 working stationary beam engine built in Massachusetts uh, and then found with an architect's note or a, a accountant's note sorry um, dating 1850s to 1860s with a lot of research that the family had held on to it for a long time uh, perhaps it was payment or it was some kind of uh, gift to the accountant uh, but it is uh, probably the earliest stationary steam engine that I've ever seen uh, on YouTube and uh, I got it going within a couple of days it was a lot of work though that you can uh, I'll go through it with you, a uh, couple of videos here, but the amount of work involved was probably, I stayed up for about 27 hours working on this engine, uh, almost a full day, lots of coffee, lots of thinking, and then I'd sleep on it, and then I came back and did another 15 hours on it, and uh, got it from a local collector that I've gotten some very, very old engines from that were not working. And uh, this is uh, number three or four that I've gotten working, including the boilers. And uh, liberal use of oil, but cleaning up after myself so that it wouldn't uh, stain into the wood too much. Because modern oil might damage the wood. Has a governor set up. I actually added a Walesco type uh, pulley because it would have originally been string because they didn't have springs back then. And I'll go over some of the modifications. Uh, and the construction of this wonderful beam engine from the uh, United States and uh, we'll uh, check it out very creative engine that's for sure next we'll look at the modifications 1852 steam engine and this is going to be the first steaming uh, that I know of and probably in many many years probably since when it was built <laughs> considering the problems that were with it it wasn't running before I got to it so there you go I wasn't gonna steam it but my air pump isn't enough uh, pressure to get it worked in and to let it find its place after the fixes I did and also to get rid of a lot of the rust there's a heck of a lot of rust on it and uh, I think it sat outside for a while so I've cleaned up a lot of the rust. I've drilled a couple of more holes on the adjuster arm for the timing, trying to get a closer uh, uh, hit to uh, more power stroke on the upstroke. But I think it's pretty lazy after 150 years or so, uh, plus, 150 years plus. And uh, we'll see how it likes the steam. I've got the uh, condenser trap here. Is a cup. I just cut a hole in the side of it. I had to add an exhaust pipe on this engine and I didn't do any soldering so I'll let you know how I did all these fixes without damaging any parts and uh, without soldering or heating up any parts uh, because if I did start doing that then I would create more problems perhaps with unsoldering things that have been fused for over a hundred and some odd years so here we go, got the governor working as well, at least spinning, it's an ornamental governor, it's not a functioning governor, but that's still nice. I had to add an extra ball on the governor as well, so I duplicated one of those, and uh, we'll pick the real one and the fake one later. So here we go on steam. It's going to have to warm up. You see steam coming now. Got a little water dripping at the bottom. We're probably gonna have a lot of water. I have to turn down the steam because the governor is just out of control. Seems to be running well though, and there's the emulsification from the oil inside the piston. I have to turn down the steam some more. There we go. I have to turn down the fire, I think. So that governor doesn't have a spring on the top, it can rotate all the way uh, out and hit things. Turn up the steam a bit. Turn down the fire a bit. Running off the uh, shell boiler. I got a second shell boiler as well that needs renovation. But we'll be doing that. There we go. I added a little bit of uh, steam. Doesn't seem to be leaking that much for a 150 year old machine. I think I've been able to seal up a lot of the problem spots 
but the base is just mounted to a piece of copper, thin copper, and it has leaks all around it, and I can't remove any of the screws on this engine because they are all fused with rust, and uh, I could break the heads off them very easily. I tried penetrating oil and stuff, but not happening. Let's turn up the steam a bit. Get it working. So after running it for about oh, uh, 20 minutes, I found some serious leaks. So I put it back on the compressor, which it barely ran on before, and it seems to have found its spot. It shows you that the steam and air are two different creatures when it comes to steam engines. Steam is an expanding gas, and air doesn't really expand too much. So with the expansion, you're going to get heating, and you're going to get the uh, heating of the surfaces, which will seal further the uh, engine, as well as it's going to keep everything uh, moving uh, in a smooth, relatively smooth uh, fashion, because you're going to be running at a higher RPM, and uh, things will find it their place. Uh, don't have much of a leak out of the piston. It seemed to have some kind of gland uh, packing in there, but I can't, there's only two bolts, but I can't take off the cap because the gasket's an original gasket and it's sealed and I don't want to ruin it just for inspection. If it wasn't working, I would do that. If it was leaking excessively, I would do that.